right, I know I usually cover trees of the Sierra, like conifers, really interesting trees. But uh, this is a, technically a tree, a native tree of the Sierra, but the lowest of the Sierra foothills. It's the California buckeye. This particular version, this species, only grows in California and southern Oregon. Nowhere else in the world. So here's a bush type one behind me. There's some back there. And there's one over there that looks more tree-like. So why am I covering this tree? Because it's extremely an interesting tree. Uh, they do things differently than almost any other trees in California. So uh, they grow here on the bottom. I'm at the very, very bottom of the Sierra foothills. I'm at Folsom Lake, as a matter of fact. There's the lake over there. And it's about nine. It's in the mid 90s here in Sacramento already, and it's in May. So this tree is in full glory in May. Before I forget, uh, a warning about these trees. There's several warnings, actually. They have a propensity to grow around poison oak. Where you find California buckeye, you usually find poison oak. So uh, it's a week before Memorial Day. It's end of May. And these trees are in their full glory with these amazing blooms. And uh, let's start with the leaves. The leaves are palmately compound and uh, it looks like a palm. Five leaves, leaflets, and uh, see the comparison, palmately compound. So what's, what, what's different about these trees? Well, they have adapted to California's climate. They're the first tree to leaf out. They'll start growing leaves in late winter if it's the weather's right. They usually start leafing out in, in February while other trees are still dormant. And the one the thing that stands out to me that got me to try to learn more about them is they die off earlier than other trees. I thought they were dying. I mean, they'll, if it's a hot climate like here in the Sierra foothill, foothills, it, they'll, they'll dry up and drop their leaves. That one behind me there is already already drying up. And why do they do that? Because the water goes away. So they leaf out when there's a lot of water, bloom out when uh, when it starts getting warm, and then they just drop their leaves. Now, they usually hang on to their leaves on the tree for quite a while until the winter storms, they, and then they drop their leaves. But So they look like a bunch of dead trees. So I was just wondering when I'm out hiking and, in the low elevations of Sierra, why are all these trees dead? They're not really dead, so that's their adaptation. There's no water available to them late in the summer, so they just drop their leaves. Now, they do grow in the coastal ranges, and if the climate's right there, they'll hang onto their leaves a lot longer. So now they're doing their blooming thing, and they attract a great deal of insects, native insects, like native bees and butterflies, do the pollinations on these plants. But one word of uh, caution on these trees, I don't recommend them to be planted around homes, they're, although they're very easy to propagate, because every part of this tree is poisonous. Uh, the native bees and butterflies have, uh, have an immunity to the, the poisons, the toxins. But like the uh, European honeybees, they'll feed off these and then it'll poison the nest and they'll, they'll give birth to uh, deformed bees, typically without wings and things like that. So keep them out in nature. So the flowers, almost all the flowers are male, except for a few on the very end. And when they become fertilized, that's, that's where the namesake buckeye comes from. Uh, there's none here because wildlife takes advantage of them. Uh, they get these leathery seed pods about the size of ping pong balls and they grow these just with the buckeyes inside are these lacquered brown shiny really neat seeds and they'll kind of hang on the tree for quite a while then they'll drop in the early spring when the or late winter when the conditions are good and the ground is wet and a lot of them they'll drop they'll put out this little little root and a lot of them start growing but most of them die off 
and animals do feed off them. Squirrels and things can can eat them. Uh, they say the indigenous people did use the buckeyes. They would grind up the uh, the buckeyes and throw them into pools and streams, and it would stun the fish, and the fish would float up. So a good way to do it to fish fish for fish. You just pick them up after they float up. And they also, during times of tough years where they there weren't good acorn crops or things like that, they would leach out the toxins by just boiling the buckeyes and uh, make a, a flour out of it, but it wasn't a preferred food. So uh, most uh, animals that feed off these are, are native that uh, that know what they're doing. So uh, interesting, it's a poisonous tree but it's pretty amazing so uh watch out for the poison but enjoy the beauty of these trees and look at that tree behind me they have interest year round uh you know they get they get leaf out really early the seeds are really interesting and they just go dormant in like early august late july and if it's hot even earlier so uh then in the winter they have these leathery, silvery trunks. They're usually multi-stemmed, bush-like like this. They can live for quite a while. But uh, the leathery, after they drop their leaves in the middle of winter, they have these uh, silvery, silvery uh, trunks, multi-trunked, and they're very interesting. So uh, look for those dead trees in the late, uh, late summer. Those are the California buckeye that grow nowhere else in the world and uh, watch out for the poison oak. And uh, another really cool, interesting native plant or tree. Uh, it's a, it's, I, some people call them bushes, some call them trees, they're, they're trees. Another very interesting tree, indigenous, uh, another uh, native interesting plant tree of California. Thanks for watching.